I got married when I was 19 years old. And that was kind of scary for me. But when I asked Michael why he wanted to get married, he said, you know, being in the military, you understand how finite life is. And if you have what you want in front of you, then why wait? You know, Michael had been already been deployed uh, for eight months in Baghdad, Iraq. And so we kind of had a routine that um, we would usually talk on instant messenger in the morning or my morning, his night. And so we got to speak on I am and very abruptly Michael had to get off and I would um, drive home about nine hours later to find two men waiting to notify me that he wouldn't be coming home alive. I didn't know what passion was outside of my passion for him, but I just saw this drive in him. I saw him come alive. I saw him you know, have this purpose that was bigger than himself. It scared me when I saw it in him because I was like, that purpose would make you sacrifice your life for a stranger. <laughs> and don't do that, you know? I was selfish, like I want you to be here. Like don't sacrifice your life for everyone else. And that's exactly what he did. He was leading a convoy of 20 vehicles with tons of men in it. And his vehicle stopped to check out that area because it was suspicious. And it was, a man was waiting in a field for that vehicle to pull up so it could blow it up. So Michael sacrificed, but he did it for what he believed in, what he was passionate about, which I did not understand until I met another military widow. I didn't know what to do. I was 21 at that point. And I mean, I was in college. I could say that I was gonna go back to work or this, but it just, the loss was so tremendous. I think people tried to give me a lot of solutions, like, you know, Taryn, just sweep this one under the rug or pretend like it didn't happen, you're still really young, or we can't wait till you get remarried and you're happy again. And the more people said that, the more I, I fell into that hole that I didn't know how to climb out of. And so in my search for my own survival and in my search for this definition of what widow would mean, uh, I created the American Widow Project. I basically created everything that I wanted <laughs> that wasn't out there. You know, it's totally peer to peer. We don't have counselors, we don't have celebrities <laughs> because these women are the celebrities. You know, we want them to just see another woman and hear her story and hear, you know, how she's struggling with this with her children or how she was able to do this with her life and inspire another woman. and. We like to do really amazing activities in between it, you know, whether it's skydiving, whether it's whitewater rafting, whether it's taking them to rebuild homes in uh, New Orleans to see the power in helping others, whether it's coming to one of our educational programs and seeing that they can go back to school or they can take this passion and make it a business or that they can overcome the obstacles that they never anticipated as time goes on. I mean, that's. That's what it's about. I mean, it's this amazing bubble of hope and inspiration. And when they leave, they're empowered. These women are a living definition of A, how finite life is, but B, how amazing you can live life in the midst of knowing that. The center of my tattoo is an exact replica of Michael's wedding band. And then around it, are the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson. The eager fate which carried thee took the largest part of me, for this losing is true dying. The tattoo was A, the first thing that all of a sudden I could say, nobody can take this away from me. This is mine. And B, um, it's not so much a reminder as it is just a testament that if I can go through five hours with some strangers, putting a needle on my back, then I can go on another five minutes when I feel like I can't. And, um, you know, whenever I've done any sort of event, um, I've always tried to have some part of it showing. It's kind of my way of like bringing Michael along with me on the journey.